Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for attending Tips for Creating EPUB Manuals, Guides, and Books. I'm Nikki Blyle, the Lead Information Developer for Component 1 DocTohelp, and I'm pleased to be your host today. Okay, before we get started, I always like to let folks know a little bit more about me. I have more than 18 years of experience as a technical communicator. I'm Vice President of the Society for Technical Communication. Um, I've been published in several magazines and journals, and you can learn more about me uh, at my website, NikkiBlyle.com. A, a short housekeeping note before we get started, I just want to mention that we will email you a PDF of these slides tomorrow, so you'll have all the links and references, so you don't have to take very detailed notes because you'll be getting all of this information. Um, what we're going to cover today, um, EPUB facts, tips and tricks, documentation options for EPUBs, uh, some EPUB properties, and I'll talk a little bit about creating MOBI files. Um, we're mainly going to be discussing the EPUB and MOBI formats today, which are two of the most popular e-reader formats. Now, with Doc to help, you could single source to EPUB, which is uh, very easy to convert to MOBI for Kindles. Um, the EPUB format is used on many popular e-readers, including Nooks. Now let's step back a bit and just for a second talk about single sourcing. As you know, single sourcing allows us to start with one set of content and output to many different uh, outputs. I know I don't need to sell you on single sourcing, I just want to let you know that mobile and EPUB outputs have been added to our deliverable set in quick succession. So now we can single source uh, to the web, to desktop, to EPUB, to mobile help, and uh, the th thing that's really interesting is you could read all of these on mobile devices. So the wonderful thing is we can single source to all of these new outputs successfully, but keep creating uh, browser-based help, chums, manuals, and all the other outputs we need to deliver and have been delivering for a long time. Now this particular slide illustrates um, a project that, that I work on that has been single sourced to five different deliverables, but with Doc to help you actually could uh, single source to, to several more, Java help, Eclipse help, Microsoft help viewer, um, a few more. Now let's talk about the EPUB spec. Now if you'd like to read the actual specification for EPUB, um, it's available at the International Digital Publishing Forum website. So I have the link there. Now EPUB 2.0.1 was approved. That spec was approved May 2010. EPUB 3 was approved October 2011, and uh, it added a lot of things that, that uh, folks wanted, uh, support for HTML5, SVG, MathML, and it uses XHTML5, which is strict HTML5. Um, not all tablets support EPUB3 yet, so you um, want to check on, on what you're using to see what it supports but it's getting there. Okay, some quick EPUB facts. First of all, EPUBs are actually a collection of XHTML, XML, CSS, and media files. They're all in a zip archive, and the file extension is .epub. Um, if you rename it .zip, you can actually look at all the files. Uh, on Kindles, of course, the file extension is, is Mobi. Uh, many, many devices of the, you know, the tablet devices, the e-readers don't support cascading sheets or su uh, cascading style sheets or support them only partially. So that is kind of why you get some variation in EPUB display. And part of the reason that they're only supported partially is that the C cascading style sheets, that, that spec, which is uh, administered by the W3C, it was designed for the web. It wasn't designed for EPUB readers. A few of the common e-readers, um, Amazon Kindle, of course, Barnes & Noble Nook. There are apps that you could download for your tablets and phones. Um, 
for example, I'll show you an example today. I'll do a little live demo of some EPUBs. There's um, Aldeco for Android. There's Cool Reader for Android. There's Stanza for EPUB. Um, there's Kobe e-readers. There's Sony readers, which uh, work with the Sony eBook library. And there's iRiver Story. That e-reader is for the uh, Google eBook store. Now, some documentation options for EPUB. Now, these are very specific uses in the documentation world, but there's many scenarios where you would want to output to EPUB, and it's a great choice. But I do want to point out that repair instructions for technicians in the field, reference manuals for those who need quick access and maybe less paper, like pilots and doctors, um, policies and procedures manuals are great for EPUB, and installation instructions for uh, software or hardware that is installed in factories, hospitals, and other remote locations. The um, folks that do that work could actually carry around uh, a, uh, a, a Kindle or an iPad and, and access this information. Now that being said, let me t let's take just a really quick look at a few a few files I have. What I'd like to show you is I have my Android phone, and I also have a Kindle, and I have an iPad, and I just want to show you how what a few different EPUB outputs look like on different apps and different devices. So let me hop over to my to my webcam. And let's start. Well, let's start with the Kindle. Um, put this under here. Okay. And if I hit open up this book called Pittsburgh Fun, you flip through it. So this is an EPUB I made with Doctor Help, and just uh, I side loaded it onto my Kindle, which meant I just used my. Um, cord and took it from my machine and loaded it onto my my Kindle. And that was after I did a conversion to Mobi. So this is actually a Mobi file. I did the conversion and loaded this onto my Kindle. So we flipped through and one of the cool things is, okay, it looks pretty good. Of course any links I have work and some links to the, you know, I have some links to the web in here. My or you're seeing a little reflection of the webcam in the uh, device if you're wondering what you're seeing. But then this is a website so since the Kindle uh, I have Wi-Fi turned on then you could actually go to uh, go to that website. So Pittsburgh Fun is just a little book I put together that's kind of a tourism guide, which is a cool thing you could do with EPUBs, um, is, is put together a tourism guide where people could read information about a tourist spot and then obviously go to web links. So this is an iPad and I have, I'm running an actual EPUB and I side loaded it onto the iPad and it's, uh, I'm using the app called Stanza. So this is help for a game, which is another good use for an EPUB and also for mobile help. So the game is called Peeve Penguins and I flip through here and of course there are all these links that explain this. Now this is a, a file that could, would also be great as mobile help on your mobile device to explain your, your game. Uh, can also be a chum, you know, could be output several ways and used several ways. So that's an EPUB on Stanza on the iPad. And then the last thing I want to show you is I have a couple of apps on my Android phone. First one I'll open is Eldeco. So there it is, and I have a few books in here I have opened recently. One of them is a, it's one of the samples that's included with Dr. Help. It's called the, um, the uh, co a company manual. If I click on here, this is an actual, so this is the EPUB format. 
it hasn't been converted and swipe through there so here's a company manual that someone could read right on the, the web links will work and everything you could read this right on your on your mobile phone as I said this is a, a Motorola Razor um, I want to jump over to uh, Cool Reader this is a different app this app actually I believe uh, this one's in Moby. I think it'll read both. Yes, this is the Moby version. I can see that up in the header. So you can see Pittsburgh Fun, the book you saw on the Kindle, looks a lot different in Cool Reader. And of course the user can change how they want this to look. They could change background colors. They could change font size. There's a lot of things the end user can change. So that's what this book looks like in Cool Reader. So as you could see we not only have different uh, formats, those different formats can be read in different ways on this, actually the same device. So, okay. So let's look at some EPUB best practices. So, I have a few few general best practices here, and then I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for um, single sourcing to EPUB with Doctor Help. Some things you could do to customize. Now, first of all, you're going to want to keep your style simple. Um, the biggest issue with styles is that if you have very deep indenting, like maybe three or four levels in, you know, bullets and uh, numbering going. Uh, being several levels in, that, that could wrap a lot. You can see these devices get very small, like the Android phone, so you're going to have a lot of wrapping of things that are deeply indented. So best to avoid that if you don't know what devices your users are going to be accessing your file with, and chances are you don't. Um, one thing is not every device reads every font. Um, so specifically symbols could be a little bit of a problem. So you may want to d um, test several different devices to check and see if your bullets look the way you expect them to, things like that. Um, tables. Tables are a big issue. Uh, linear tables with many columns. Uh, there's no exact number. I can't give you a rule, but when you have a lot of columns, they're a bit of an issue because they'll split across pages because they're wide. And obviously, as you can see, we have a lot of variation in device size, so they'll split up differently on different devices. So um, I think this problem will be fixed in the future. I think there'll be technology where we could specify how the table should break and how it should wrap, things like that. But for now, um, you have to watch tables in EPUB. Let's uh, talking about images. Okay, now um, a few tips about graphics. Um, images make EPUB file sizes bigger, so you may want to compress your images before uh, you convert them to save space. Um, the maximum ex acceptable Kindle Fire, sorry, sorry, Kindle file size is 50 megabytes uh, for the. Now that's the Kindle store. Um, Apple, the Apple Book stores two megabytes. Now, if you side load a file, if you actually just load a file onto your device, the uh, the only limit is the space on your device. Now, uh, images for uh, best formats for images. To, to, while we're still talking about them, uh, JPEG is great for photos and PNGs, PNGs for everything else. TIFF is also okay. Um, images will adapt for each advice. They'll actually, you know get smaller and bigger, but you might want to keep your image size at um, 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels or maybe less, and start with high quality images so you don't get pixelations. Um, 300 uh, DPI dots per inch or more is great, uh, and 72 DPI should be your absolute minimum. Now videos. A great thing to do with videos is to link to them. and this is because instead of embedding them, uh, link to YouTube or some other site, you don't have to worry about the embedding. And and the thing the thing with embedding is you need to have different for several different formats and file sizes. And I do have a link at the end that explains all the different formats you would need. Um, the users will need to have Wi-Fi, but um, you'll avoid having a huge file size, and you'll avoid having to have several 
different versions of videos. Of course, if your videos are confidential and you can't put them up on YouTube or some other public uh, place, you have to work with that. Now, let's take a specific look at Doctor Help's EPUB features. Now, just to uh, back up a little bit, with Doctor Help, you can author in Word or you can author in Doctor Help's built-in editor. So you have options for authoring, but for your outputs, we're going to right now we're going to talk about the EPUB output. Uh, it supports EPUB 3 as well as 2.0.1. We talked about those earlier so you could generate either one. Uh, your content can be authored in Word or the built-in editor. You can add um, specific properties and some of these are mandated by the EPUB spec. Um, these are these are easy to add. The title, the author, the identifier, this is you know like a number. Uh, the publisher, the publication date, the cover image, the language. So those are very easy to add through dialog box. Um, Doc to help creates EPUB, which you can convert to Mobi with. Um, you can convert it with several things. I'm going to demonstrate Calibre today. It's it's a converter that I like to use. Um, there are other standard features that make customization easy, and I'm going to talk about those. First of all, beginning an EPUB project. You can open any project you have in Doc to help, you know, start a new one. Um, Doc to help includes sample projects. Just uh, open one of those with the Getting Started Wizard. Select a target, in this case EPUB, and click Build. Now in the Help Targets dialog box, let me jump over to Doc to help. I'll show you the the Help Targets dialog box is right here. You just click this dialog box launcher. Oh, I'll switch to EPUB. And when you go in the EPUB section, this is where you could specify the title for the book, the author, the identifier, and you could regenerate it so that you get these numbers need to be unique and Dr. Help does that for you. Um, you could add the publisher date, the publication date, it'll default to the current date, um, add a cover image, just surf off to it, and also pick the default language. So Talk to Help makes that part easy for you. Now the, go back to our slides. Our standard features, as I mentioned, um, Cover image, JPEG, ping, or GIF is best. Uh, the title, the, this is the title you specify will be displayed on the cover page of your EPUB. The author name you specify will be displayed in the EPUB reader. Uh, identifier is the unique identifying number for your, I, for your EPUB and that's required by the standard. Doc to help generates that automatically. Other standard features, publisher, that will be displayed in the EPUB reader, publication date, current date is used by default, and the language of the book. Now let's jump over to, uh, to some other features of Doc to help. Now one of the things is your single, I'm, I've been talking about single sourcing today. Um, you, when you single source, you have something called dynamic content, and uh, that's a fancy term for the links, pop-ups, expanding, collapsing text features that we all <coughs> excuse me um, that we add when we're when we're single sourcing. So Doc to help does adapt these features for us um, when we when we create ePubs. Now first of all, any of your pop-ups and glossary terms they'll just open in a current window. They won't actually pop up. Um, all content and collapsible sections, and let me jump over here, get my highlighter. This is what a collapsible section looks like when you uh, have it in your in help output. Just all that content is displayed instead of being collapsed. Uh, topic links that are specified to open in secondary windows will just open in the same window. Uh, keywords, which are index entries uh, that have multiple entries and groups. This is a group over here. If you've ever done this in online help, created a group of topics and then when the user clicks on them, they could choose, uh, when they click on a link, they could choose from that group of topics. 
Uh, those don't open as pop-ups when clicked in EPUBs, but they instead link to the index, so users could get to that information. And then down here is an example of expanding text. When you click on 250th anniversary, its semi-quincentennial um, expands out. Uh, those may be displayed or hidden in EPUBs. That's just a setting in Doc to help. So Doc to help covers that. Now a few tips. Um, you, uh, to create a custom EPUB table of contents. A, a table of contents does get created, but if you want a very specific one for EPUB, you could do that very quickly in Doc to help using using styles, because Doc to help use the styles to, to convert everything. So styles are the, are the core. As long as you apply styles, you can create any of the outputs and you will get it. It will look exactly the way you want it to. So let me jump over to Doc to help. And I have a document here I added, uh, an EPUB, TO, I named it EPUB TOC just for something to name it. And all I need to do, this is a topic, one of the uh, topics within my within my project, all I do is choose the C1H jump style and just apply the style. And we could do that across the board. Then when I build the file again, I will have, when I build an EPUB, I will have a custom table of contents and all I did was apply styles. Um, one thing I want to mention with Doc to help you can conditionalize text, entire topics, or entire documents. So all we would need to do is add a condition that says e EPUB. So this is only for EPUB. So then if you built any of your other uh, outputs, if you built a CHM file, if you built mobile help, if you built manual, that document would not appear. It would only appear when you build EPUB. So very easy to handle. Let's jump back. So that's one tip. Now another tip is, say you have your book has it, it, your book has different chapters, obviously, and you want to create a little chapter level table of contents. Well, Doc to Help already has a feature called Automatic Related Links, and you could use this feature to make a nice secondary table of contents. So the neighborhood is the chapter name, and then all of the all of all of these are links to secondary headings. So let me jump over to let me jump over to a uh, actually a mobile output just I just want to show you what um, a secondary link would normally look like so okay welcome to Pittsburgh fun these are and I'd like to note I do see that some people have their hand up for questions I'll answer the questions at the end I thank you very much for waiting Okay, so these are secondary links. So Doc to Help created these automatically because Welcome to Pittsburgh Fun is a heading one and these are all heading twos that appear under it. So it automatically creates these links. So all you do is change a couple of settings in Doc to Help and they're just check boxes and dialog boxes and you can actually create a chapter level TOC that looks like this with it just Doc to help does it automatically so I will have those when you have the slides the instructions will be included for that and then I wanted to talk about um, you can in Doc to help you can create a custom target template for any output so Doc to help uses if you're if you're working in Word it uses Word templates .dot files to convert them. If you work in our build an editor, it uses .css files. So in this case, I just want to show you, um, for example, that we're working in Word. I could create a custom target template for any output, but I have created one here 
That's for EPUB specifically, and I named it EPUB Target. And since the reader, and in this case I mean the human reader, the, the human being, can change the font size when you're looking at a Kindle, when you're even on your Android phone, on the iPad, you can change the font size, the background color, all these things. You really can't control the final result of what users see, but you can make some tweaks in the target template. Um, so the default view is, is more what you would like. Um, but of course, the e-reader e does do some of its own rendering. Now, for example, in the target template, you could change the, the, the spacing of the lines, you know, maybe change it to 1.5. You could justify text to the left or right. You can, not the heading one and heading two styles, maybe you make them a little bit smaller so the default is smaller. So that is very easy to do in Doc to help. In fact, you could see when I click on the target template button, I could say edit template. And what I would suggest you do is actually, you know, say edit template, open your template, save it as a new name, and then start making some changes. That way the original remains and you could, you could experiment. So moving on. Okay, and if you don't have an index in your book, that's very easy. Uh, Doctor Help has something called the Theme Designer, and it's very easy to turn off the index heading uh, in your EPUBs, and all you do is go into our Theme Designer, and you can see that I... Oops, Oops screen disappeared there for a second when I went to get my highlighter. Let's see if we could get it back. Oh, there. Whoops. Let's see if we can go back one. Okay. So, sorry about that. Um, what you could do is actually delete this value of index, and that way you won't have an index heading with nothing under it because you don't have an index. Of course, if you do have it, just leave it the way it is. So, now I would like to do a quick demo of converting EPUB to Mobi. And I'm going to use Calibre, which is a free a free utility out there on the web. And I'll go back. I have it open here. I'll go back to my slides for a second just to show you that uh, I do give you a link for where you could download it. Um, you add your EPUB to Calibre, Calibre will let you import it. If you have doc to help and of course you could download a trial version from doctohelp.com, a 30-day free 30-day trial. Um, when you create an EPUB with doc to help, it'll automatically add it to Calibre if you have Calibre installed, of course. And then you use the convert books button. So let me jump over. Okay. So by the way, Calibre includes very nice documentation. They have a quick start guide that, of course, is an EPUB, and they also have um, online information on the web. So you could learn a lot about the features of this. So, okay, here's Pittsburgh Fun. I built it earlier. Um, whoops. Now I want to convert it to Mobi. So all I need to do is choose it and then say convert individually. And I have the option. You can see right now the output format chosen is Mobi. There are several output options. And I can make some changes here to the metadata. There are a lot of different things I can do, and I suggest you um, check out the Mobi document, the uh, Calibre documentation to learn about all the changes you can make. But there are there are many different options and things that you can change. Then say OK. So you can see this isn't very, it's building it right now, don't you can see that down there. Not very complicated, obviously. And then you'll see that Mobi appears in your formats. So all you need to do, first of all, you could right click to save it somewhere on your machine. And when you click on it, it opens up in Calibre. And Calibre is a great way to see, you know, how your output will look in any reader. I mean, it's just it's just one way that it could look, but at least you could you could take a look at it and you could flip through it. 
And there's our book. And you can see my heading one is rather large, so that's something I might want to go into my target template and edit. But there we go. So there's a good idea. Now let's jump back to our slides. Now wrapping up, I would like to note first of all that EPUB is evolving. You know, the um, International Di Digital Publishing Forum, forum is, is, is you know, always looking at it and making improvements so that spec will change. Uh, Doc to help does make it easy to create EPUBs. As you can see, I just opened my project, chose EPUB and build it. Uh, dynamic features and images are all handled so that you can single source to many outputs and EPUB. So that's covered. You don't have to do a lot of special changes. And of course, required metadata that is required by the EPUB spec can be added with Doc to help. You don't have to go to another tool to do that. You could use Doc to help. And I did want to give you some uh, references for readers and, and apps for EPUB. First of all, there's you know Calibre ebook management that I showed you, the Sony Reader for PC, the Nook for PC. So these are great so you can test things on your desktop without having lots of devices uh, like I do here. Uh, Adobe Digital Edition, there's Firefox, um, the Kindle Previewer, which you do need a, a Kindle Direct Publishing um, account or, or, or one Kindle account so that you can check that out. And I did want to mention when you talk about Kindle Direct Publishing, um, yes, you do need a KDP account to download it. and if you do want to put free books up on uh, Kindle Direct Publishing, uh, you do need to give uh, them exclusive rights. So you can't put free books on a lot of different sites if you choose to uh, do it on the Kindle site. I mean the uh, Amazon site technically. Okay, I have a lot of references and further reading for you, um, a lot of articles, some blog posts, links to the um, International Digital Publishing Forum website, uh, and uh, and actually even some slide, some slide, some uh, presentations that are up there on SlideShare. So, with that being said, I will take some questions. And if you'd like to contact me, I'm Nikki B at ComponentOne.com. As I mentioned, you could download a free version of a free a free 30-day trial of Doc to Help at doctohelp.com. It's 30 days. Just try it out, see what you think. I would recommend that you just when you download Doc to Help and install it, when you open it up, there's a Getting Started wizard, and one of the options is Open the Sample Projects. I would suggest just opening one of those and just you know building things, playing with it. You can't hurt anything. And um, you could follow us at Doc to Help on Twitter, and also um, I, I personally am on Twitter as Nikki Blyle, so I'd be glad if you followed me there. And with that being said, I'd like to thank you all very much for coming, and in a second we'll dive into questions. Have a great day.